I'm Karen Goldberg. And I'm Katherine Strickler. In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to collect and preserve environmental DNA from water samples. There are a number of different ways to collect and preserve environmental DNA. We're going to be walking you through today the method that we've been using, which is also detailed in this protocol. In this section, we're going to talk about how to collect eDNA from the environment with water samples um, without getting any DNA that you may have carried from another site into the, uh, the sample that you're trying to collect. So there are two ways that we collect water samples. One is in a bottle that can be held in a cooler um, and then filtered later. And the other one is in a temporary container like a whirl pack that I'll be showing next um, that you filter on site. So this is the, drop, the grab bottle option. You always want to pre-label your grab bottle because once it gets wet, it's pretty hard to get that Sharpie to stick. And you can see that I'm standing outside of the edge of the water. Um, so even though my boots have been bleached and 10% bleach and scrubbed beforehand just in case I get into the water, it's also better if I can just stay completely out of it. So in order to keep my hands from introducing extraneous DNA into the sample, I use a glove. You can see that I'm pulling up just the very end of the glove, not from the fingertips. I put it on the hand that I want to use to collect. Take the cap off the bottle without touching it. And then if my bottle is new, I don't have to do this, but if my bottle has been used and bleached before, I rinse it three times before I start collecting the sample. And that is to get rid of any residual bleach that might be in it. You can see I'm shaking it because residual bleach might also be in the cap. And I'm pouring it not back right into where I want to take my sample. Sometimes when you take a sample, you can get a little bit of duckweed and other things in there. That's not a problem. It'll just come out when we filter. So the other way that we can collect, uh, collect samples that we're going to filter right on site so they don't have to travel very well um, is in a disposable whirl pack. Now, these things come clean and sealed, so we don't have to worry about bleaching them and reusing them. So in order to use this whirl pack, we just tear off the top. Open it up. And fill it with water. And this is more water than I need, so I can squeeze it out a little bit in order to be able to roll this down. One, two, three times. Fold it over. And then I'll just place it in the shade or in a cooler until I can get to, uh, to filtering it. After collecting our water samples, we filter the water to concentrate the eDNA and preserve it. The protocol and equipment we use are designed to make it easy to filter samples in the field, but you can also bring your grab sample back to a field house or a lab like we're showing here today. So Kath is starting by putting together the filtration equipment. We use a vacuum filtration system run by this vacuum pump. So the filters that we use come sterile uh, in a filter cup. And so the filter is at the bottom of this. And if your filter cup doesn't come with a cap like ours does, um, you have to be careful not to touch the inside of the filter cup as you're handling it. So while the samples are filtering, Kath is setting up so that the forceps that we'll use to handle the filter can become DNA free by, um, by soaking in 50% bleach. So the next step is to get the grab sample out of the cooler where it's been on ice 
to prevent degradation while we're traveling from the field site and getting ready to filter. Then Kath is shaking the, the bottle to make sure that any DNA that might be adhered to the sides or collected on the bottom has come off. And then pouring it into the filter cup for filtration. Now you can see that this can all be done barehanded because nothing is touching uh, what will become part of the sample. It's just the water in the cup and in the grab bottle. So after pouring water in the cup, you engage that vacuum pump. These pumps are available at auto parts stores as part of brake bleeding kits for about $40. Now the water usually goes fairly fast through that filter, as long as it's uh, clear, like from clear mountain streams. There are sites that have very small particles that clog filters. And if you're working in some of these systems with a lot of small particles, you may want to move to a larger pore size filter like five microns. This is a 0.45 micron filter, which is what we typically use. The size of the filter cup have gradations on them, so you can see exactly how much volume you're putting through that filter. We typically use 250 milliliters, um, or for streams, one liter. And what you're looking at here is a 250 milliliter filter cup. This is the Nalgene 0.45 cellulose nitrate filter. After all the water is filtered through the filtration system, uh, the DNA is now concentrated on that filter and it's the filter that we need to preserve for the next step. So you let all the water come through the filter, try to get that filter as dry as possible. And then the method we're gonna show you today uses um, ethanol to preserve that filter. You can also, uh, use, you can also dry the filter uh, with silica beads and preserve the DNA that way. So the next thing to do is to pull off that filter cup uh, without tearing the filter, and then get ready to rinse the forceps that have been soaking in the bleach water. So it's very important to get all the bleach uh, off of the forceps before touching the filter so that you don't destroy any of the DNA on the sample that you're collecting. Kath is getting the ethanol tube ready. These tubes have 95% ethanol in them, about um, a milliliter. And these are two milliliter Sarstedt tubes, which is what we recommend um, because they don't leak. So Kath has gotten everything else ready before putting on this glove because once she puts on the glove, she can't touch anything else with that hand except for the filter itself. So if you find that you've put your glove on too early, you need to switch it out before touching the filter. The next step is to just fold the filter up so that it fits in the tube, which we do with a combination of forceps and gloved hands. Then place the filter into the ethanol tube and make sure that it gets all the way down into that ethanol and then put those forceps back into the bleach. At that point, we can close the tube and label it and it doesn't matter at this point what we're touching with the gloved hand because we're done using that glove for handling the filter. And we use an ethanol proof pen to label that tube so that um, if any ethanol spills on the outside, we don't lose our labeling. And that's it.